actually once you got on the starting line and the gun went then your fears evaporated and um, it was nothing but good uh, good memories really. And my main track event was 880 yards and 800 meters but in addition to that I also ran 400 meters and 1500 meters. My father had been an extremely good athlete at county level and my brother after him, he also had been a, a, a good athlete to, uh, to, to county level. And one of my best races was against Russia, uh, where I won uh, the 800 metres. And uh, I was presented with a camera afterwards, a Russian camera, which was, a, I think, a replica of the Leica, which was a, quite a famous camera at that time. About four years after I'd uh, I'd started running, did I really feel that I could uh, achieve a, a really, really good good standard. And in 1959 I was invited along to an event at Welling Garden City and I won that in, in a time of, uh, I think it was about 148.6, which was inside the Olympic qualifying standard. You hope above hope that you will have done enough to be selected for the, for the Great Britain team. And the other person who got selected in, in place of me had been to the two previous Olympics. He was a well-recognized uh, star athlete and had run some very good times in the past, but um, he'd been injured and he was coming back off of injury. Although he hadn't beaten me, um, they decided to take him instead of me. And then when he got to the Olympics, he got knocked out in the early rounds, so that, that made it even worse. When I was just 17, um, I'd finished with um, a, a boyfriend and had been invited along to a 21st birthday party at which Peter was attending. And I met him there for the first time and I thought how thin and skinny he was because his running weight was only nine stone, which is what I am now. So he was very gaunt, very thin extremely polite and that so I knew him for a year and then we got engaged after that year didn't we? Yeah, we did. And then we were engaged for a year and then we got married in 1963. So this year I'll be married 50 years to him. He made me wear myself out. <laughs> he gave me the opportunity to fall asleep in a sand pit. <laughs> That's true as well. That's, that is, that's really true. We were doing repetition 400s at Pitt Street on a Saturday afternoon. My mum was there as a, as a spectator and we had to do 10 400s with a 200 metre walk between the two. Well I got to seven when I couldn't go anymore and I just collapsed in this high jump sand pit. We were suddenly worried because we couldn't see Gordon. Well, it, it, it just disappeared. <laughs> it, it, as it happened, he disappeared into a sand pit just to recover. You have to be quite selfish to be a top class athlete because you have to give a lot of time. But I didn't know any different when we got married. It was, it was That was how it was when we were uh, engaged as well. So he would train every day, every evening. He would race on a Saturday and then train on a Sunday to the point of sickness. He was always sick on a Sunday morning. Right. One of the saddest things I often feel is that the sentimentality of the selection boards overrode their wisdom more than anything else in that at the time of the 1960 60, yeah. Rome Olympics, Peter was already the, the best 200 metre, 800 metre runner in the country and, it, um, and eliminated Brian Houston, who was then the current champion, beaten him on many occasions. But the sentimentality of the selectors, they chose Brian Houston to go to the Olympic Games rather than Peter. And this, of course, was a great shame for many reasons. Great shame for him and a great shame for Britain because we didn't send our best man to the team. So when I slowed down from athletics, I began to look for other things which weren't quite so demanding on my time, but nevertheless were just as enjoyable associated with athletics. The, the athletic club that I belonged, belonged to was primarily male, but there was a need to bring ordinary people, people who never run before, encourage them to run as well. So 
um, I had thoughts about the establishment of a jogging club. We've got a whole team of people who uh, support uh, up and coming athletes. Uh, you're financially supported, which, uh, which I never was. Um, you, not only have you got floodlight facilities, but you've got these synthetic tracks, which are superb. You've got gym facilities. You've got people who look after your diet and nutrition. That, that didn't happen in my day. You, you had to be a person who was dedicated and wanted to achieve the best with, from the ability that they had.